Hey you guys, Aaron and Dusty and Baby Maxwell here. <laughs> And welcome back, or if it's your first time to our channel, then welcome to Eat, Move, Rest. We wanted to bring you guys in on our birth story, kind of the, the week leading up, the night before, and during labor, just all of it. We wanted to bring you guys with us. So Erin said, don't be afraid to bring the camera. And I'm like, are you sure? And she's like, <laughs> yes, let's go for it. This is a once in a lifetime thing. <laughs> So we are expecting soon we will be blending for three. Shut read, up! Read it out loud. Shut up! Not. Oh my god! Are you cereal? Having a baby. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Oh I am so excited. We're yep. expecting. You are? Yep. Oh! Dusty and Aaron are having a baby! Oh my god. <laughs> Well, you guys, here we are. It's December 22nd, AKA my 40 week mark. Yep. No baby. No baby yet. Big old tight coat. Almost couldn't get it zipped. <laughs> but in my defense, I do have a really fluffy, cozy, comfy fleece on underneath. Oh, that's why. <laughs> it has that's nothing why. to do with the enormous human being that's now a toddler living inside of me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we're going for a walk. It's one of those things that's supposed to induce labor. Not that we haven't done all of them. Yep. And then some. So what are they? What are sex. the things? Obviously we all know everybody says sex. <laughs> what else? Um, I guess these walking, don't... spicy foods. Spicy walking, they say, especially walking upstairs, which we're about to walk up a hill, so that counts for something. Yeah. And I will say, whenever I walk or do a workout I definitely feel a lot of tightening a lot of contractions so update on that ever since Thursday night which was two nights ago I along with my contractions that have been kind of sporadic they've been kind of getting into a little bit of a rhythm but ever since Thursday night I've been getting some cramping along with them so I think that means things are moving in the right direction I think just staying fit and active and eating really clean has helped a lot Digestion's been pretty much on point. So all of that has been a blessing to me. Yep, my di digestion has been pretty good. <laughs> well guys, it is the night of December 22nd. My due date, still no baby. It's actually midnight, so it's December 23rd now. So this is just our little birch log that we hung up when we first moved in. Every year I pretty much hung something festive on it. So we've got these little ornaments. Still got more to do as long as baby doesn't come tomorrow. What do you think? What's your prediction? Tonight, tomorrow, something's gonna happen. I'm nervous, don't say it. Dink got groomed on Monday. He's all cleaned up and spruced up and ready to meet baby. You're a really good pup. And we're watching The Nativity Story. It's like the only Christmas movie we haven't watched 18 times yet. And then this is Baby's little Christmas present that they get to grow into. It was just too cute to pass up. So if this is in fact the last night, then my last dinner was amazing. We had a homemade yellow curry. Russ kind of formulated the recipe last weekend and I loved it, so I requested it again. Been having cramps on and off, but it definitely feels like something has changed since Thursday, so we shall see. We're, we're hoping for a baby before Christmas. What are we doing? Getting ready to go, hopefully. Just packed bags, filling these pressure waves or surges like every five minutes, lasting a minute for the past several hours. I don't think I slept at all. We went to bed at 1 a.m. and the first one woke me up and since then I've just been hanging out, laid in bed till about five and then got up and decided, well, I'm gonna do my hair in between surges while I still can. Put a little powder on my cheeks and Get this baby out, hopefully. 
We got our bags packed. Too many bags. Too many bags. Okay, time for a smoothie and hang out in the basement for a while. Hopefully. Okay. They don't feel they don't feel great. Time to take these down. Shoot. <sighs> what are you thinking? It's early. Yeah, it's early, isn't it? It's a full moon. And I kind of thought it would be cool to deliver on a full moon. And it's starting to look like it's going to happen. And my mom actually said I was born on a full moon. They say that it's common to deliver on a full moon. It can affect the amniotic fluid just like it can the tides of the ocean, which, you know, could be a wives' tale. But my mom said she delivered on a full moon, and it's looking that way for me. So. Here we go. Just getting in my last Instagram post. I need that birthing ball, but whenever I need it, it's not where I need it to be. Mm. Ah. Ah. Just assumed I'd play the part of keeping you in the right direction. No matter how your confidence may fall, I'll be here as your foundation. Ocean. Man, I can't believe I did that drug free. That was hard. That was pretty good. We did it. We survived. Now, parenthood begins. So, this is victory. This is a vegan burger at the hospital. We got some little salads, they brought us some fruit, some applesauce, apples. We got it made. It's pretty lucky. This is how we celebrate. Well, you guys, it is 5.30 p.m. We were supposed to get out of the birth center at noon today. We were only going to stay for 24 hours, but they had to repeat baby's hearing test, and he passed with flying colors, so we were grateful for that. The nurse just showed us how to buckle Max into his little car seat, which yeah. we're glad. we They did everything for us, above and beyond. We couldn't be more grateful and more glad with our decision to birth at the hospital and stay the night and just chill and be taken care of. Yeah. 
fed us amazing meals of anything and everything. They brought us ridiculous amounts of fruit to the room. It was hilarious, actually. So thank they you a... to everybody at St. Elizabeth's and Lincoln. Like, yes. all, honestly, so awesome. Everybody yeah. was just so nice. All it was all well. really great. And now it's baby, baby's first car ride. And I will say I feel much better going home right now than I did going there. Yep. So... It was a great experience. I kind of feel honestly like we were on a little mini vacation. So if you guys have any qualms with birthing at the hospital, my best advice to you is get your midwife, get your doula, do things naturally, painkiller free, pain med free, and just do it at the hospital. You'll be in great hands, you'll be taken care of. And I think that literally we decided that like 90% of what we didn't know, we learned it in the past 24 hours at the hospital. They taught us everything. Yeah. So, everything from breastfeeding to buckling baby into his car seat. Feeling good. Feeling a lot more confident about going home and doing this thing now. So, baby Max is here meeting grandma and grandpa. Doing a little video, grandma. It's a life changing. What do you guys think? Yeah, it is. Okay guys, so we just got home and it's time to introduce little baby Maxwell to Bo. We've got the swaddle that we used pretty much all the past couple days. Yep, we're gonna so. give it to Bo so he can get the scent <laughs> get the scent going and meet him before they actually meet face to face. What do you think, bud? What does that smell like? Sit. Can you sit? We'll bring him down, okay? What do you think? You're a big brother. Aww. What do you think, bud? Are you excited? You're a big brother. Good morning. We've got diaper on diaper action. <laughs> what do you think, Maxwell? Are you waking up? Getting a little double chin. That's what we like to see. <laughs> Oh, it's so bright. So we are setting up a little newborn photography session. It is Christmas Day and just got done watching a little Christmas movie, eating some green smoothies and oranges and all kinds of good fruit. What do you think, bud? <laughs> so here's what we're looking at. Here is little Maxwell Ocean. I'm just taking it all in. How cute though. What do you think of this bright pretty world? Well, we done it, you guys. We survived Christmas Day with a newborn and this cutie. Now we've got baby here sleeping. Hopefully he'll sleep the whole time we chow down and then we'll go down and open our own presents to each other, finally. And relax. He looks just about as snug as a bug in a rug. <laughs> Let's see what we're making, actually, before I hang up the phone. So what is this here? We got some curried chickpeas. Just some little, yeah, chickpea poppers. They should be yeah. crunchy, I don't know. And our leftover yellow vegetable curry, which we will be putting on YouTube, so stay tuned. A little rice and tofu. Brown rice, tofu, and good to go. Yes. Here is a little look at three-day-old Maxwell. How cute, how perfect. Aww. Hi, Stinker. Good morning, can you shake? Hey, baby. You guys coming down? Yep. Hey, you guys, Aaron and Dusty and baby Maxwell here. 
and welcome back or if it's your first time to our channel then welcome to eat move rest yes <laughs> so oh Bo's always got to be in the mix he's feeling a little bit left out lately with the baby getting all of the attention but he has been getting extra puppy treats yes. and puppy love <laughs> so anyway we wanted to bring you guys in on our birth story kind of the the week leading up the night before and during labor just all of it we wanted to bring you guys with us so Aaron said don't be afraid to bring the camera. And I'm like, are you sure? And she's like, <laughs> yes, let's go for it. This is a once in a lifetime thing. Yeah, I told, I had told Dusty that I wanted him to bring the camera <laughs> to get some video, get some photo. If all else fails, you know, it'd be nice for us to have. It's better to have more rather than none or not enough right. footage. So I, I told him I wanted that and he's like, all right. <laughs> so we made it happen. <laughs> I got in her face a little bit in some pretty dramatic times but I think it'll be worth it. So. Honestly, like it was such a blur to me. I don't even think I noticed. <laughs> yeah, no, she definitely didn't. <laughs> we are nine days postpartum, yep. feeling really great. I almost have no pain at all. I've been walking on the treadmill, yep. so taking it easy, easing back into things and just really soaking up all the baby love. <laughs> yeah, it's been quite a ride. So they say the minute your, your first baby is born, your life changes for forever. And we like didn't really get it. We never <laughs> did. And we were like kind of terrified about being parents. And they're, everybody's right. Our lives have changed. I've never felt love like this before. <laughs> and it's just been amazing. This first week has been so much fun. Yeah, it's been pretty incredible. It's been, you know, the actual birth was definitely a roller coaster of ups <laughs> and downs, highs and lows. Yeah. Overall, it was extremely difficult, extremely <laughs> taxing. But then afterwards is like the most amazing rush of emotions in the positive sense that yeah. you could ever imagine like like a love drug yeah. in every sense of the word it was really crazy i can't believe it's i mean it's still lingering it's like it was really intense at first but i'm still feeling that a lot right we're both still kind of like in a little bit of shock and we're in our workout clothes we basically haven't left the house in a few days <laughs> And yeah, we're, we're still in shock. We're just so much in love and we're just having a blast. So you guys are actually catching our little man in action with his <laughs> eyes wide open. He is yes. quite the sleeper. He's a pretty mellow little dude, which we don't mind. We don't mind <laughs> at all. But he wanted to be here to help share the story. <laughs> so let's take it back a week before our, our birthday or for Max's birthday. We had been cleaning the house. I've been painting doors and laying wood floors and like trying to finish everything. The last thing we needed to do was to pack the house full of food like Aaron said like little squirrels like we were hibernating now so yeah. we went we loaded up and yeah we got that done and then we unloaded our closets we had so oh many gosh. bags in the back of my car donated a bunch of stuff yeah. which felt amazing I will tell you that having a child being pregnant yeah. definitely gets you to <laughs> clean your house <laughs> we donated so many clothes it felt great but the week went on Aaron was getting anxious, I was getting anxious, the due date was rapidly approaching and no real signs of labor or anything. Yeah, so we did start going for long walks. Yeah. And not that I had gone over my due date, but we did want everything to be as close to the due date as possible. So right. we were doing anything and everything that doctors and blogs had recommended. <laughs> so long walks. And honestly, when we did our long walks, like I started to feel what they would call Braxton Hicks or warm up contractions, your right. body kind of starting to prepare for actual labor. Yeah. So that was kind of exciting to, to know that things were progressing in the right direction. So moving on to Friday, I woke up and the contractions had kind of gone away. I was kind of bummed out. I thought things were really starting to progress. Um, all was back to normal and we kind of just went about our daily lives. Yep. And we had also been making freezer meals, which I highly recommend. Yeah. So we kept making big soups and stews for dinner every night and we would eat maybe like a third of it and freeze the other two thirds so we could have a couple more nights meals. Yep. I think we had like four of those. So like the week after was just completely a breeze. It was nice. It was a, that was a lifesaver. Like Aaron just said, all, actually all the stews that we made are on the YouTube channel. We'll link those. Yeah. So check that out below. Aaron was due on the 22nd and Saturday the 22nd, no baby. So I'm like, 
We're going to do everything we can to make some spicy mm -hmm. curry food. There's a full moon glowing in the sky, yep. and I have heard a lot of crazy stories about <laughs> women giving birth on the full moon. And I was like, come on, full moon, work your magic. Yeah. This would be so cool to have a full moon baby. <laughs> so after dinner, we had our spicy curry. It was amazing. We sat up in the nursery, and we were like, you know what? Whether or not this, this happens today or tomorrow or this week, we're, we're not sure, but we need to settle on baby names because we still hadn't, <laughs> we still hadn't decided, we, we didn't know if it was a boy or a girl, so we hadn't decided on names yet. Mm -hmm. And we sat down that night and we did, and we we're like, okay, this is the boy name, this is the girl name, <laughs> and we had it solidified. That was like probably 10, 30 or 11, and just two hours later at like 1 a.m., Aaron pretty much goes into labor. Went to bed, relaxed and fine, and my eyes just like sprung awake at like <laughs> one in the morning because all of a sudden I was getting those painful contractions again and it wasn't anything excruciating, it was just kind of like, yeah, you know what? I don't think I'm gonna sleep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I slept like a baby. It's funny because she didn't really wake me up till like three or 4.30 I think. And so I was fine. I didn't even know mm -hmm. what was going on. She was just doing her thing. So I kind of just wanted to ride it out because I was like, this could be kind of like a false alarm again. I, yeah. I've kind of heard that it can come and go, get you excited and then let you down. So I went into the other room, unplugged my phone and brought it back. Just yeah. started scrolling through the gram, yeah. <laughs> trying to keep myself busy. I was like, well, if this happens, maybe I should make a couple posts in advance. Yeah, right. <laughs> Legit. Like, so I was on my phone scrolling and then it started to get to a point where the contractions were kind of rhythmic, like they start to get. So I was like, this is it. This is real. Yeah. And they were getting to a point where, you know, I kind of had to start deep breathing through them in between. And our midwife had said, you know, you'll want to come in when you're at 511. So your contractions are five minutes apart, lasting one minute for at least one hour. Yeah. And they were 511, but they weren't painful. And I kind of wanted to do my laboring at home for as long as possible right but so I woke dusty up and a lot of people <laughs> will disagree with that especially the midwife that wasn't super happy about laboring at home we did check aaron's dad as a physician he was like you guys are good he's like labor at home as long as you want otherwise you get to the hospital too early they might send you home or so, try to keep you there and then end up rushing things along induce, in an unnatural process. Right. So I got up, got ready, brushed my teeth, put my makeup on, threw my hair up in a top knot <laughs> just in case. <laughs> and then, you know, we let the midwife know just so, you know, if we had to come in, she would be ready. Like Dusty said, we called the doula. And by that time, it was getting to the point where... You know, I had to take breaks while doing my makeup so I could breathe. I had to take breaks while grabbing my purse and my bags. Yep. Um, still not to the point where I was like frightened or thought that I needed to be somewhere <laughs> like the hospital. So went downstairs to the basement, turned on the fire, laid down on my side and just kind of breathed and relaxed. Yep. And by that time, our doula, Alyssa, had come over. We went through, you know, kind of trying to decide if we should head to the hospital or not. And we kind of made the call that I kind of felt like I was holding back almost. Like I could either stay here and keep laboring and things could not progress because I know I'm not where I plan to be or where I need to be to be safest. Or things could actually really progress and then an emergency could come up where I'm not where I need to be and give right. birth in the car, which would not be fun. <laughs> so I just straight up asked her and I'm like, do you want to go? And she's like, yeah, I feel like I'm holding back. So I'm mm -hmm. like, that's it. Let's go. We got in the car. It was quite the car ride <laughs> the car made it worse i think it was just sitting kind of felt like it was clamping things off and it made the contractions a lot more painful <laughs> yeah it was probably like a 10 or 12 minute car ride and you had at least two or three in the car and it was like intense the first one in the driveway i literally had a gag reflex i almost <laughs> threw up i was like that close it yeah, was really bad it was bad so we finally get to the hospital Alyssa grabs a wheelchair. Aaron's like, nope, not sitting in a wheelchair. <laughs> she is halfway down the hall already having another contraction, belting it out in the hospital hallway and finally get to the room well, just they a few were, minutes later. They were almost, I, I would say they were closer than five minutes apart at that point. So I was really afraid of embarrassing myself and scaring people yeah. at the hospital. So that's why I just 
bolted. I was like, I hope there's no small children. I hope there's no other expecting mothers because they will not want to have their babies. <laughs> it, it was intense. So, so I think I had three of those in the hallway, in the elevator, in the waiting room. Yeah. Got up there and they were trying to do the check-in thing and I was just through the doors. I was like, there's no checking in. We're like, there's no time to check in. You know who we are. We're here. Let's go. And so we get in the room. Aaron strips down. They get her on the bed and do an immediate check, and she's nine centimeters. <laughs> I don't know how that was even possible. I I was continuing to tell myself throughout pregnancy that I'm tough and strong <laughs> and I have a high pain threshold. Yeah. Didn't honestly think that was really the case, Yeah. but apparently it was because I had grinned and bared quite a bit at home. <laughs> so if you guys don't know, 10 centimeters is like you're having a baby. So <laughs> nine centimeters was way late. The midwife wasn't thrilled that we were that late, but her water hadn't broke. You know, the her mucus plug didn't come. Any of those those early signs hadn't really come so we yeah. weren't really sure that's why we I labored at home for so long was because like Dusty said I didn't have a bloody show I didn't lose my mucus plug yeah lovely terms by the way <laughs> <laughs> my water didn't break even at the hospital there was no significant event like what you see in in movies you know where the woman is out in public out of you know fancy party her water breaks and there's like a splash of liquid it wasn't like that and no. it isn't for most people but mine never really happened at all maybe a little bit but we weren't really sure yeah so i would say that max was born within an hour um erin was on her knees for a little while and then on her side seven really hard pushes i would say and and max was out max was born drug free no pain meds it was crazy it was emotional i was i was feeling emotional like holding aaron on the bed squeezing mm -hmm. her hand like so it they was had nuts. me in like a bunch of different positions like the bed was nice because it folded up so i remember i was like on my knees hanging my arms <laughs> over the back of the bed and yep. just like it was such a roller coaster of like highs and lows because like every contraction was like lower and lower and Ugh. lower. So much more pain and agony yep. than I could have ever prepared myself for. Um, and then every time in between, it was like such pure bliss. I felt yeah. so good. I was just like, I can do this. I can do this. I've got this. And then when I would hit another contraction, I just thought, give me the pain meds, give me the drugs. Dusty and I actually had a code word. I was supposed to say his full name and middle name um, if I wanted the drugs. Um, I kind of mentioned, I don't think I can do this, but he's like, you told me to stand firm, and I did. And I'm so glad that he didn't you know, just tell me, fine, do whatever you have to do. Because yeah. the number one thing that was most important to me was to just really have that experience of that, almost like a rite of passage to experience the full spectrum of like every feeling. I wanted to feel all the feels, Yeah, definitely did. Drug free, I'm impressed, so proud of you. Yeah, we lost our daylight. <laughs> so we lost our daylight, what's new? Thank you, Winter. So anyway, we're, we're up in the kitchen now. Max was about ready to crash, well he, he <laughs> kind of already was, so he's on the couch right here behind us. But yeah, we, had an awesome experience. He came out after, like I said, probably five to seven, like real strong pushes. I started to see his head. And I and will that say- that was like pff, one of the craziest things and feelings for me to look down and to see my baby's head. At this point, remember, we still didn't know if it was a boy or a girl, but I could see the head and Aaron was in like pure agony and it was just a crazy emotional time. Yeah, so with every single push, you know, I could feel his head like, coming out but then the, the push that that urge would go away and he, I could feel him pull back in and oh every gosh. single time it was like the most discouraging feeling in the world because I just wanted him out and I didn't know how much I had in me right like every single push took so much energy and there was one where I finally was like you guys I just can't do it yeah and apparently that's that happens a lot and they actually think that's a good sign because yeah. that is when you're actually about to give that final <laughs> heave. Yeah. And so I finally mustered up every ounce of energy and courage I had within me, every ounce of strength and gave it one final push. And this push lasted about 10 times as long yeah. and it was about 10 times as much more effort yeah. and force as I had given in the other ones. So I guess I didn't realize how hard I just had to push. And right. Finally, he came out, and I had, I had no idea it was just going to be one final heave, and then he'd be out. But he was. Yeah. They immediately put him 
directly onto my chest, had him all bundled and you know, skin to skin contact, kept yep. him really warm next to my heart, which are all of the things you're supposed to do because that helps with the oxytocin production, which is that feel good love hormone. Yep. Um, and you know, they kind of say babies will like army crawl up to the nipple and immediately <laughs> start to breastfeed. It's just kind of part of their instinct. And yep. it's amazing to see that actually happen. I was able to successfully breastfeed immediately and it was just unlike anything I've ever experienced. Yeah. I didn't feel uncomfortable or exposed or anything like I thought I would. It was all just so raw and real and just instinctual. It was and like we said earlier in the video, something changes and you just instincts take over and you become a parent. <laughs> like I'm a dad now and Aaron is like I'm a mom and I couldn't love him anymore. I, I love him so much more than I thought that I ever could or would. And it's just amazing. Yeah. And we felt that instantly. And, and well, we're, we're like in the hospital there, Aaron's breastfeeding. I'm like hanging out by the bed and it's just like, wow, it was just amazing. We had we thought it was a girl. We yeah. had all thought it was a girl for the longest time. I was like, oh, I'm going to be a, a dad to a girl. I've always imagined having girls, and I don't know why, but yeah. I thought it was going to be a girl, too, and like 99% of people kept predicting girl for us, and I'm not sure. It must have just been some kind of vibe yeah. that I was giving off, but it, I just I had always wanted to be and kind of envisioned myself being a mom of boys, yeah. but I still thought it was a girl. So either way, we would have been thrilled, and we were super excited to find out that we had a little baby boy. Yep. And so the name was Maxwell Ocean. Is. is. It still is. <laughs> it still is. That was the one we had decided on the night before. Yep. And it just fit him perfectly. He yep. had, we couldn't really tell initially who he looked like more. And we still kind of can't tell when babies are so newborn. They're just so squishy <laughs> that they all kind of look similar. Yeah. He has dark hair like Dusty. It's kind of thin. It's not curly. It's too soon to tell. Yep. But... Um, we shall see. <laughs> we shall see. So the name Max is one that I've always loved. Me too. I, I had a friend in high school named Max. My parents, for whatever reason, would call me Max every once in a while. I don't know. I just loved the name. And so that's that's how we came up with Max. I think we both we kind just of, liked it. We kind of wanted something that was strong yeah. and classic and that could be abbreviated into like a three-letter name because I really like the three-letter thing. I don't know why. We yeah. wanted something short and sweet. So Max is great. Yeah. And then Ocean, we kind of just really wanted something a little bit unique and different that nobody else was naming their child. Right. So I think it initially started on a Pinterest list I found <laughs> while I was at work. And sorry, mom and dad, I shouldn't be Pinteresting at work. <laughs> but I saw Ocean and I was like, hmm, I kind of like that. And I don't know, it immediately made me think of Dusty and when we first started dating because he was obsessed with the Oceans movies, <laughs> Oceans 11, 12, 13. Is that all of them? That's all of them. <laughs> but I don't know, it made me think of him and he's all about the ocean and, you know, everywhere we've traveled, it's like someday we're going to live by the sea and yeah. something about it just felt right. And it's a, it sounds awesome. Like, yeah, bottom it's line, like a it's movie just, name. It's such a cool name. Like, <laughs> if he's going to be a movie star... He has to have this name. So. <laughs> so yeah, that's what we went with and we're yeah. pretty happy. And I didn't know if I wanted like my parents and Dusty's mom and like the grandparents and everybody to be in the waiting room. I kind of thought it might make me feel a little bit anxious and like work against the labor. <laughs> but the instant we headed to the hospital, I was like, call my dad now. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted everybody there. I wanted them waiting. And I'm so glad we did that. Um, right after the birth, we kind of just had our little, you know, the three of us had our family bonding time, maybe for an hour or so. The nurses were kind of like, you know, you'll never get this moment back again. Your family is more than willing to wait for you guys. Just take your time and yep. enjoy this and soak it all in. And yep. so we did that. And then finally we had the parents come in. That was pretty fun. And again, it's just another one of those moments that you only get once. And so my little bro was there and it was just it was just cool it was just amazing to get mm -hmm. to show him off to our family and it was yep. just us and so much fun yeah so he was born exactly at 12 17 p.m and weighed six pounds 13 ounces yep. he was 19 inches long <laughs> i think they said head cir circumference 14 inches centimeters yep. i don't know either way you that's that's the gist of it yeah 
And, and now uh, on New Year's Day, he's over seven pounds. He's already surpassed his birth weight. The doctor right. said he's doing amazing. They said that it would probably take, you know, it usually takes at least two weeks for them to regain their birth weight. They yeah. kind of lose a lot of fluids, as does the mother. Um, and just because your colostrum is very, very minuscule amounts of, of supply, so they kind of lose and then gain again. But he regained within, I think, four days, five yep. days. Yep, he's killing so, it. He's going to be a big boy, we yeah. hope. So. <laughs> yeah, his pediatrician said, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. And I said, well, I got my Christmas gift overnight. My milk came in within three days, and I was like, Merry Christmas to me. I could use a little bit up top. Yes. <laughs> so then after, the fam after our family left the room, then the midwife and the nurses kind of got me all wrapped up and up and situated and ready to head over to our suite. Yep. And at that point, I got up and all of a sudden I felt super, super lightheaded and dizzy. Like I was afraid I had lost too much blood. <laughs> like after the placenta came out and all of that, there yeah. was like a fair amount of blood, which kind of scared me. So either I got queasy or I actually had lost a bit. Yeah. Or maybe it was just because I had been in labor for several hours. <laughs> but... Probably Eventually all of the above. got past that, the lightheadedness, and they took me in a wheelchair, took us to our suite, yep. and got us situated in there, and more skin to skin, more breastfeeding, and baby love, and snuggles, and yep. all the good stuff. And the nice thing was, the entire birth floor, pregnancy and childbirth floor, was like its own secure wing of the hospital, so there weren't any sick people around. It didn't really feel like a hospital. I kept telling Dusty, I felt like it was like a fancy, like, embassy suites or something it was like <laughs> so suites. it was so nice and i felt like we were on a vacation and they like <laughs> fancy embassy suites <laughs> they like they like pampered us and it felt really good and really nice and there's a lot of negative connotations especially in this all natural holistic like crunchy mama world about yeah. you know staying away from hospitals but that was not our experience so it wasn't just a separate wing the whole fourth floor was just the labor delivery and, and check-in had like ids and everything like that right glass doors you couldn't get anywhere it was it was it was definitely secure it was definitely comfortable and we couldn't have been happier being there um like aaron said it almost felt like we were in a hotel the nurses were all super sweet super kind we left with so much so many materials like education the nurses made sure that we knew how to swaddle. They walked us to our car with the car seat and made sure we knew how to do that because honestly, we didn't. I had they never put a baby a... In, a, in a carrier before, so they like had to show us all this and mm -hmm. they were awesome and we're yeah. so glad. We had room service and they catered to vegan diets, yeah. so we got veggie burgers, yeah. oatmeal, tons of fruit, like yeah. ridiculous amounts of whatever we wanted, everything we needed. Yeah. Like Dusty said, they sent us home with like everything diapers, burping cloths, a little cute beanie, like all of the personal care stuff that I needed for my recovery. Yep. They, I mean like diapers and like granny panties <laughs> and I'm so thankful they gave us all that stuff because I didn't have it at home. Yep. And the nurses were all such sweethearts and just were checking on us all the time, taking care of our every need. We even had they, a double bed so yeah. we could both sleep. Yep. Actually all three of us were, were snuggled up there in the double yep. bed. And it was awesome. It was comfortable. It was they, fun. It made it more of an experience. Yeah. And you didn't feel like it was a hospital stay. You didn't feel like you were sick yeah. and, and quarantined. It was nice. And while I hadn't initially wanted to stay the night anywhere or overstay wherever I went, the birth center was kind of like you're in and then you're out and you're home. And I'm so thankful we didn't do that because I think we would have felt kind of like now what? Yeah. So at the hospital the next day, we we were kind of antsy to get out because it was Christmas Eve day. So yeah. of course we <laughs> wanted to be home with our baby for Christmas. But before we could get discharged, you know, they they kept us plenty entertained. They had a lot of checkups they had to do on baby. They sent in a lactation consultant. So we kind of, um, she helped to make sure that baby's latch was good and that I was breastfeeding well. And she said everything looked great. So that was reassuring. She did have a lot of helpful things to share with us that I had no clue about, so that was really good. They actually sent in a newborn photographer, so we got a photography session for super cheap, um, just really raw, in-the-moment shots of us, you know, not done up or anything fancy, so it was really special just to have those. They sent in a priest. We weren't <laughs> able to make it to midnight mass, unfortunately, but we did get the wafer. <laughs> and who else? We met yeah. with our pediatrician. He came in and did rounds. and It was just nice. Again, it was nice to be there. We, we had heard so many horror stories about hospitals 
and and how bad they are and ultimately for us it was a safe place and it was a comfortable place and we got excellent care excellent food like Aaron said we actually had to stay a little bit longer at the hospital because they had to do a newborn hearing screening and the first time his left ear did not pass which of course no parent I wants to hear that right ear. or his right ear whichever ear one of them passed one of them didn't so they had to wait a minimum of four hours to recheck and upon rechecking while we twiddled our thumbs and just kind of hung around with baby finally they rechecked brought him back almost immediately and said he passed with flying colors so that that's pretty common you know a lot of times they can have fluid from birth or whatever stuck in their ears so finally we were able to leave it was around 5 p.m that we got discharged on christmas eve and we were just thanking god for the great timing because we wanted to be home, so we made a quick pit stop. Yep, we left Christmas Eve night, the sun was setting, and we stopped at Grandma and Grandpa's. We stopped at, <laughs> at both sets of families, showed them off real quick before we headed home, and it was it was so much fun. Again, it was just like, it's, it's like having a puppy, only like a hundred times exactly. more fun, more valuable, and so much more love. And it was just, it was nice to, to see everybody then outside of the hospital. And then we got home and snuggled up on Christmas Eve, and it was the best feeling in the world. Just yeah. the three of us. So. We made a big bed on our couch in the basement, <laughs> turned on the Christmas lights on the tree, had the presents under the tree, yep. and it was just great. And honestly, like because things happened more quickly, like I was to the point where I didn't think I was going to deliver on or near my due date. I hadn't wrapped, wrapped Dusty's presents yet. I was just like, <laughs> I'll get around to it. So that was kind of driving me nuts, and I was like, he's probably just going to have to open up cardboard boxes but next day we woke up it was christmas day i ended up wrapping his presents which we opened that night um all of our all of our family ended up coming to us which was really nice we hadn't expected to really host christmas but we were so glad that we got to yep family came to, to our place and yep everybody was over it was a great christmas the best yet by far so far it's been a great week and we're trying to get some clips to bring you guys along with us Last night was New Year's Eve. Today's New Year's Day. <laughs> it's again, it's dark already. I can't believe how fast time has gone. These days no. are flying by already. He's grown so much already. Yep. But if you guys like this video and this <laughs> this little recap, I know that the scenes are kind of messed up. The lighting is kind of sucked. But we really wanted to sit down and just lay it out for you guys. Tell us, tell you our experience. Share with you. Our little man and share some clips of the journey so and if you guys can't cont if you can't tell he is pretty mellow pretty chill <laughs> if you're wondering how our sleep deprivation is going <laughs> we're feeling pretty well adjusted honestly we are getting less sleep and having to wake up at night yeah but he's feeding really great breastfeeding is going well and he sleeps like a rock yeah. I have to wake him up for feedings <laughs> yeah um, so things are going good and he's he seems to be really happy here, so we're happy for that. He's happy and he's healthy, and we are too, and we're so thankful. And we're gonna do our best to make him uh, the the best vegan baby in <laughs> in the state. I mean, there's not many people, I'm sure, where we live that can say that they had a vegan pregnancy and are gonna raise a vegan child. But we're gonna go for it. So again, thank God for a, a amazing Christmas, a beautiful gift of a son, and. We wish you guys a happy new year. And happy and healthy. Happy and healthy <laughs> new year. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell to stay notified. Leave us some comments. Leave us some love below. Yeah, we're kind of curious. So yeah. if you're expecting, what's your due date? Do yeah. you know what you're having? Are you maybe waiting to find out? Um, what's your birth story? What has been your hospital experience or maybe laboring at home experience or maybe your birth center experience? Just share right. with us. Right. You guys know what I'm about to say. Eat, move, rest, your best. And we'll see you again next time with Maxwell. <laughs> Happy New Year. Bye. And I say,